Welcome to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. My name is the British Eagle, and today we're diving, flying, soaring into an interesting episode here, and I've got some explaining to do. In the last episode, we were on the Grand Cipher, ready to explore and move into the next part of our journey. In the recording of that episode that you guys are not going to get to see now, um, again, I had some issues with OBS. I looked into OBS, figured out what it was. I'm sorry uh, for this and for other series that I'm working on. I've had audio stuff, but I think we finally figured it out. As this is a hobby of mine, I'm not going to be perfect, and so things are going to get missed sometimes, and stuff is going to be kind of an issue. Even with big YouTubers, it happens as well, so I'm really sorry. You guys did miss some stuff. I'm going to do my best in editing to show you guys the very minor story stuff you missed. In the episode I'm not showing you, uh, last time you saw an episode, we ended the episode after fighting Id and Lyria ran off with Id and all that stuff. We were on the ship and we were about to fly somewhere. We did fly to a new city. I believe it's Seed, Seed Howl or something, Hollow or something like that. Basically, we land at the city. Roland says we need to go see people and um, we get the opportunity to explore. But in that episode you guys don't get to see now, I don't explore and I show up to the quest counter. I came back to this city before exploring, so you guys don't miss as much as you would think. Um, we did upgrade. I will show you what we upgraded. So we upgraded our gear, um, so we were able to go... Here, I'll just go this way. Let me show you guys what you guys missed out on. Again, I'm so sorry about the recording. It was an audio thing. I fixed it. I spoke to my buddy Solfrist. We got it taken care of. Once your weapon's tempered. So we spoke to the blacksmith in the episode you guys missed, and unfortunately, I saved over the file, so you guys don't get to see, an, without me re-showing you all this, what you missed. So we got uh, Catalina up to level 30 for her Flame Rapier. Grand's at 30 with Swords of Eos. We used an, a special item with the blacksmith to now get the Tiamat Bolt Omega, which is incredible. It's level 41. We got Eo the Ze Zel Zezel? I still can't pronounce that. It's level 41 as well. Ugin, we got up to level 30 with the Drace. And Rosetta, we got up to level 30 with Egoism. Um, I will actually show what you guys what we can do. Let me go back here. Upgrade. So we didn't got do it. sigil upgrades because I was given feedback in the comment section. Thank you to the commenter who I can't remember your name right now, but thank you for your comments about upgrading. So our weapon upgrading is not an issue. You were telling me to hold off on sigil upgrading, which makes sense now that I see how many of the same sigils we get. It's better to just wait for the better ones late game and then upgrade them. What um, kind of weapons you need? Weapons. So we can actually get the Durandal for Gran, the ephem Ephemeron? Ephemeron uh, for Catalina. You already got your new weapon. So did EO. Ugin can get Leviathan Muzzle, which looks so cool. And then Rosetta can get Swordbreaker. We are missing right. um, a couple it. of items. So we need the Champion Merit and the Chieftain's Braid. Um, Champion Merit, I believe, is what allows you to upgrade to these new weapons, and we use them to upgrade uh, Rackham and Eo. So those are the two people I Don't chose to upgrade. Don't forget about upkeep. Now, in the episode that you guys aren't going to see, which we're redoing it right now, I did a bunch of Fate episodes. So I want to spend this episode doing the Fate episodes again, even though I've already watched them in the recording you're not going to see. I want to do them again. I will show the stat upgrades on screen if the game doesn't show it again when I do this a second time. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So for the Fate episodes, I did five of Grands, three of Catalinas, and five of Rackhams. See how it says stats next to Eo, Ugin, and Rosetta? I already got the stat upgrades for these stories I completed. However, I would like you guys to see them. And in the lost recording, it was great to hear the story, the background of how they all met. So we're going to go through these and we're going to go through Eo, Ugin, and Rosetta in today's episode. So today is a Fade episode. Hopefully you guys enjoy. Let's get started and let's see if I can view this Fade episode again. Oh, wait, we already did this Our one. Adventure Hold began. on. Wait, I think we already did this one. Yeah, we did the first one a couple episodes ago. I think it's this one that we didn't do yet. Let me check, because we did that one before. Yes, this is the first one. The journey begins. Now, where was I? Oh, right. We just humiliated the Empire, who probably had reserves waiting somewhere close by. We realized we needed to get off Zinkenstill fast. The Empire was not going to rest while Lyria was on the loose. 
and I figured that since we shared a life force now and all, it was in everyone's best interests if we stayed together. Plus, I'd always wanted to explore the far reaches of the skies, though doing it on the run, not what I had in mind. There was so much to think about, so much to decide. But all those plans could come after we had escaped Zinkenstill. I didn't want a whole army, this time with, I don't know, 30 Hydras marching on my home island. And, well, I had another, more personal reason for wanting to leave. Before I knew it, our journey was at an end. The end. As in, we'd reached the end of the skies. My son, I'm waiting for you on Estalusia. I thought about Dad's letter. I missed him. When I was young, he would take me to the edge of the island, and we'd sit there, admiring the clouds. I wanted so badly to explore those skies, just like Dad. I had to see him again. And now, I wouldn't have to make that journey alone. With Vern, Lyria, and Catalina at my side, we commandeered a small Imperial craft and set out for the greatest of destinations, Estalusia. All right. Now, after the, the voice actor is done talking, it goes to a black screen like we just saw there. For the ones that I haven't completed yet, they will show up with a pop-up screen saying you've earned attack and health bonus. Um, and it'll say what your stats were before and after. I'm going to try and put that on screen either right now or when that black screen pops up. I'm going to try and, and somehow fit that in there. Um, but you guys are now caught up in what we did in the last... Well, almost. We obviously have to go through these stories that say complete again for you guys to get caught up. But this is all we did in the last episode. So all we did was we did these fate episodes that I've already completed. And we did the weapon upgrades. That's all I did. I just wanted to make it focused on that. Um, actually, let me click here real quick. There we go. Okay, cool. Um, sorry, there was a pop-up on my screen. But so that's all it was. So I, again, I do just want to apologize before we jump into the next episode. I'm so sorry, but I want to redo this even though you're not getting to see the stat upgrades because these stories are really cool and I don't want you guys to miss out. And um, again, it was just an audio thing. It was OBS. Soul Chris helped me figure out what the issue is. Uh, I, and we fixed it and it was easy. It was an easy fix. I just didn't know about it. It was something new that I hadn't looked at before. Thank you so much for your patience. Let's jump into the next one. Here we go. Bonds in the skies. From the moment we left Zinkenstill, our adventures were hectic to say the least. Catalina, who claimed to be an experienced pilot, crashed our small vessel onto the gusty fields of Port Breeze. But we quickly pulled ourselves together and found a new ally, and helmsman, in the form of Rackham. Since then, we gained more and more allies, and no matter what obstacle we faced, the crew always worked in tandem to find a solution. It's all thanks to their support that I've made it this far. And what a wild ride it's been. To think I had never even set foot off of Zinkin still, but now I can't even count the number of islands we've saved, let alone visited. Sure, being a roving band of heroes is difficult, but it's got its perks. New faces, new places, and a whole airship's worth of fun. Who could pass this life up? Anyway, we've just begun the next chapter of our adventure. We discovered another piece of the sky map which led us to Zega Grande. Yeah, a whole new skydom. Just imagine the danger, the promise. But I knew it was going to be fine. Just another set of memories to add to our ever-growing collection. I hope you're ready, Zega Grande, because here we come. I love the passion and excitement that the character Grand, the captain, has about meeting Lyria and Catalina. And, you know, he talked about in The Journey Begins about his father. So Estalusia is where I guess we're going to find him or potentially meet up with him. Really excited to learn more about that relationship and kind of how that things work out there. Um, yeah, here we go. 
Oh, by the way, I think this one, I think it's this one right here. There are some episodes where you actually have to fight. So I think it's this one with the sword, the blades crossing each other as the logo. So there is at least one for each character, or at least so far from what I've seen that I've completed, where you actually use a different character to battle. It's actually really cool. Well, some of them, it depends. But uh, I think Vern's Doubt is not one. I think it's just story. But episode four, when we do that in a second, that's going to be fighting, which is really cool. I'll, I'll show you in a second here. Vern's Doubt. Skyfarers, we need your aid. Goblins! Goblins in Tempeel! We were at the dock in Folka, taking care of landing procedures, when a panicked old merchant rushed toward us. In between his wheezing, he explained that a shipment of relief supplies headed for Tempeel had been intercepted by monsters. <sighs> Tempeel reminded me of Id and how he had totally beat our butts. It was embarrassing, yeah, but what's worse, it reminded me of losing Lyria. Tempeel, huh? Maybe this time around I can actually help out. That wasn't Vern's usual peppy tone. He was probably reliving those bad memories, just like me. I guess after you've spent as much time together as we have, you pretty much share a brain. It wasn't going to be a fun journey to Tempeel for either of us, but we were Skyfarers, and desperate times called for brave faces. Anyway, goblins. Smart. Fast. That meant we wouldn't have the luxury of time. We needed to throw together the minimum amount of supplies needed for the journey and head out. I turned to Vern so we could discuss game plans, but then I saw his ears were droopy. If we're fighting goblins, then we should have them licked by lunch! Something was wrong, but with the hasty flight preparations, I couldn't spare the few minutes to investigate. Pull through it, Vern, I thought. We need you. Yeah, again, these stories are really interesting. It gives you some insight to the characters uh, that we don't typically get, at least from some of the conversations they have with one another. Um, this is really cool. It talked, I mean, Vern's down there talks about Vern really feeling down about Lyria not being able to help out. I mean, he tried a little bit, but I think it was Id or Lilith that basically like threw him back and he couldn't do anything. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting to hear his doubt and his, you know, his self value to the team and, and kind of, you know, is he good enough really, uh, to protect anyone? So let's try this one and see if it's going to let us fight. It might not cause I've already done this before, but let's see. Ah, uh, so it is going to let me, so it says play is grand. Okay. Yeah. We'll start quest. I did change the team back to Catalina, Rackham and EO, by the way. I've got your back. A little less than an hour later, it was time to depart. But Vern was nowhere to be found. Hurry, Skyfarers! We can't waste another second! The later we got there, the more supplies would be stolen or destroyed. This could add up to weeks or even months of delay in Tempeel's restoration. Vern, I hope you're okay, bud. I was worried out of my mind, but a captain's gotta do what a captain's gotta do. I left a message for Vern with the merchant, and we set out. Goblins? I can't even fight stinking goblins! What good am I? Just a scaredy lizard who brings everybody down. Man. If only I was more like my pal, swinging swords and shooting spells. Then I'd finally be able to help out. Maybe I could have stopped Avia from taking Lyria. Maybe I could have done something. How do you live the skyfaring life without combat skills? Heck, I can't even blow sparks, much less fire. What kind of dragon can't breathe fire? Ha! Huh, I tell everybody I'm a cool dragon, but I'm just a faker. You are unworthy. You were right, Ed. I'm not worthy. Not worthy of being in the crew. Not worthy of being the captain's best bud. 
Ah, oh, finally, here you are. I was looking everywhere for you. Uh-huh. What did this old dude want with me? Your captain left you a message. The crew's gone on ahead, but as an indispensable member of the Grand Cipher, they want you with them as soon as possible. And that's in order. Uh, indispensable? That meant, like, VIP, right? Me? For a second there, I was about to blow it off. Like, yeah, right, my bud's just saying that. But then I remembered. This crew had always kept it real. No lies. No flattery. Yeah, we kicked butt because we believed in one another. These guys were my best friends. And maybe we weren't perfect. I mean, we lost to Id, but my bud put his captain boots on and got right back up and tried again. It was never about swords or magic. It was about always moving forward, never giving up. And more than anything, it was about being there for each other. What was I worrying about? Who cares if I couldn't fight? There are a million and two ways to help on an adventure. I mean, you try questing without a cook or a healer. Hello? Merchant of Urn, do you read me? If you're done daydreaming now, I've got a ship ready to go. It was time to get a move on, or I wasn't worth my scales. Sorry, everybody. Your pal Vern is on his way. Man, that was a long one. He really took his time there ex explaining everything. <laughs> Dude, I love Grand's armor. I absolutely love this. The supply should be this way. Let's move. Uh-oh, our potion stock's running low. We'll Catch be this. okay against a few goblins, right? Hopefully. So, I just upgraded don't all my it. weapons. Like, did I do that last time before? I can't remember when I sure did this. Hope Vern's okay. I don't know. He was really down, wasn't he? Poor Vern. Oh, poor Vern. I feel bad for him. We're in a hurry here. Heads up, people. Uh, Rake and lay. Oh, that did like a lot of damage. Nice. Oh, you got him. Nice job. All right, gang. All right, let's go down here. Damn, we're back for more. Huh? Right when we were about to cross the finish line. I see Beat them down. Over there by the supplies. We have to go help them. Huh? Looking good. Got him. Nice. We got the guy with the shield. All right, so we got to go this way. Yeah, so I don't think I'm going to get any rewards for this mission because, again, I did this in the episode that you guys aren't going to see. But, again, I hope you guys enjoy this and appreciate Hope's that doing okay. we Scott aren't Bear. skipping anything. Oh, doing better now. I you want you guys to see all this. Please, would you protect them? We're on it. Take cover, okay? We fight us! On my mark! <laughs> Heads up! Got eyes them down. on them. The real fun's just starting. Hey, nice fortitude charge. That was the last of them. Thank Let's you. freaking go. You saved Tempteal's future. Heads up. Goblin reinforcements. Uh -oh. Just don't quit. They're coming. Did they just jump yeah! across? Burn! Oh, I forgot you do that. That's cool. Did you miss me? <laughs> Took me forever to catch up. Hey, buddy. Vern, was that an explosive? When did you get bombs? Here come more of those stinking gobbles. Can you take them? Sure I'm going to rage at, at Arts 5. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We should honestly just one-shot things now. Yep, we're one-shotting enemies because of the... Yeah, because of Arch 5. Holy crap, that is so broken. Those goblins managed to steal Okay, well, we did one-shot the relief for good is done. Or the, uh, They've already hauled half our grain to higher ground. Higher ground? Sounds like a job for a cool dragon. That's a great idea, Vern. Put your wings to use. Are you sure you can manage? What if the goblins fought you? He's we gotta protect king. the merchant's I'll cargo. Back in 30 seconds or your money back. Or your money back. <laughs> I love it. Oh, they're back. Catch oh, this! <laughs> Let's patch you up. Well. Make sure I keep yes, everyone healthy. <laughs> oh, that was Yo. Sorry, Yo. Oh, there's more? Oh, here they come. Look at that. Dude, we're doing so much damage. 
Oh, hold on. Oh, they're dead. Wow, Eo. Holy crap. Here, thanks. I brought potions. Everyone feeling better? Thanks, Vern. You're a lifesaver. Nice job, gang. Nice. Oh, there's more? Oh my gosh. Those goblins are getting nasty. Don't fall for their trick. Come on. We can take them out with our uh, Y attack. Nice. Oh. Armor break. There's a lot of enemies here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Looking good. How's the cargo doing? Nice. Those stinking gobos didn't get a single sack. Now we're cooking. Get him, get him, Grand. Come on, Captain. Go time. Nice, we did it. There we go. Fun little side mission or side quest. This is really fun. Now it's on. The enemy have started their retreat. I think the worst has passed. Is everyone you okay? Uh, you're alive. Then he's finally gonna be rebuilt. We owe you everything. And Vern was the real MVP. Aw, oh, shucks. I bet you say that to all your lifelong pals. <laughs> quest cleared. Let's go. <laughs> that worked out somehow or other. Dude, his armor and sword look so cool. I freaking love it. And by the way, guys, I guess you guys technically haven't gotten my real reaction to the upgrades and the new weapons we got. They are all freaking dope. Um, I'm happy to look at them again so you guys can get another reaction, but it's so cool. I've got your back. After we'd secured the supplies, Vern talked about how he didn't think he was good enough for the crew. Obviously, he was the only one that felt that way. I'd always appreciated his support. During fights, he was a supply runner, lookout, and cheerleader. And both on and off the battlefield, he was my courage. But even the best people, and dragons, get discouraged sometimes. I really should have been more vocal about my appreciation. I made sure he knows now. We won the day because he came flying to the rescue. Just like I knew he would. <laughs> I'll always be there for you, pal. He was back to his old self, basking in the praise of the crew. Which caused his ego to swell like a balloon, but hey, who doesn't need a little confidence boost after a dip? And Vern, let me just say it now. I value you. And all the hard work you do. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Oh, that's such a good relationship they have. I think that's awesome. All right, let's get to the next ones. Here we go. I think yes. that I might you? be it for Grand for right now. Yep, so we can't do any more until we've gotten him to level 20 or higher. Uh, so let's go to Catalina. Hers and Rackham's, there's not a whole lot here, so we should be able to kind of fly through these here. And then hers, we can't do until we progress through the main story. But let's get to it. Lyria's Guardian. You think you know the sky and wind, but then you come to a foreign land where unfamiliar songs on the air beckon you toward the unknown. Adelina, where do you think this breeze is coming from? The wind rustled Lyria's hair affectionately as she spoke. From somewhere far, far away. Much time has passed since Lyria and I escaped from the Earth Day Empire and met the captain in the woods of Zinkenstil. I found myself thankful that the sky has no limit, because no matter how many journeys I've made at her side, there will always be more to look forward to. Very nice. So Lyria's guardian. Really cool to learn about her story with Lyria. The fact that they were close. It sounds like they were close then before the rest of the crew even met them. So they were kind of the OG of this crew, I guess. Uh, a vow witnessed by the skies. Let's keep going. A vow witnessed by the skies. Lyria and I first crossed paths when I was still a knight of Earth Day and she a tool in the Empire's mad experiments on Dark Essence. So you're Lyria. I was appointed to stay by her side as both captor and guardian. 
She reminded me of a beautifully crafted puppet, never moving or speaking unless commanded. Her expression was fixed, and her eyes were bright, but cold, as if made of glass. Moved to pity, I wanted at the very least to light a smile on her face. But I may as well have been talking to a doll. I couldn't find the part of her that was alive. It wasn't until many days had escaped us that I realized Lyria was a real girl with a feeling soul. She simply didn't know how to act like one. So, I taught her to laugh when she felt joy and cry when she felt sadness. Through books and reverie, I taught her to long for the outside world. And when colors on a page were no longer enough, I took her hand and led her to the roof of the military base. <laughs> the illustrations Lyria had seen were lovely, but the sky now stretching above her was boundless and so luminous that it drew forth tears. And finally, finally, her blue eyes shone as if they were two patches of sky lit by a sun from within her. That sun melted my heart. There, with the open air as our witness, I made her a promise. Someday, we'll sail this endless world together. I swear it. Wow. Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for Catalina, I mean, Lyria might still be stuck in, uh, in that, that kingdom basically being used for tests and all kinds of stuff wow really sad honestly um but thankfully catalina was there to be her guardian a world you will come to As know the bond between us grew so did the cruelty of the experiments they performed on lyria lyria doesn't belong here no living creature does the shining empire I served now became to me a place clouded by doubt. Day after day, a battle raged within me, between the knight loyal to her flag and the guardian who wanted to set a sad girl free. Then, one day, the memory of Lyria's response on the roof broke through like a clear ray of light. Really? You'll... you'll show me this endless world? I had made a vow. There was no more question where my allegiance lay. I took her hand once again, this time not to simply gaze at the sky, but to leap into it. And I did it for myself as much as I did it for her. Yep. So like I was saying, I mean, if it wasn't for Catalina, she would still be trapped in that kingdom. And to be fair, yeah, sorry, I think I mixed them up, sorry. Um, I thought in the episode one, they had mentioned that she released her notes. In episode two, they re uh, that she gets her away from the, the world that she'd known previously. But yeah, now she's out with her with her group of, uh, you know, friends here on the, on the Grand Cypher traveling around exploring. Well, back in the story, obviously at this point in the game, she's taken, but um, yeah, originally she was in a castle and I guess they were doing all these like tests and stuff on her. It was pretty messed up, to be honest. And Catalina had had enough and helped her get away. So now it's time for Rackham's story. Um, and it's really cool, by the way, that you can go back and watch these again if you need a recap of where they've been, what they've done. Really cool that they do this. I really love also the the perspective of each character. I think Lyria, you get her side of it being like, what, you're gonna show me the world? Catalina's like, yeah, of course I am. You deserve to be free. Um, and, you know, from Lyria's upbringing, she didn't realize that there was actually more to do out in the world. And, and I think all she knew was the kingdom that was using and abusing her, unfortunately. So Rackham, here we go. He's got five here. Wow. Okay, let's get started. Blue skies, ahoy. Piloting an airship ain't easy work. But whether it's plotting a windward course or conducting some routine maintenance, you can always count on experience and intuition. Ha! Just a little further! Finally, the Grand Cipher broke through the nebulous shadows and turbulent winds of the Grim Basin, and to greet us on the other end was our reward, the brilliant clear blue. 
It was a panoramic azure, dappled by silver white clouds and gleaming from the light of a new day. Always an exhilarating sight to behold. And judging by the cries of celebration starting to spread across the deck, I took it my crewmates would agree. Damn, who'd have ever thought a young dreamer from Port Breeze would make it all the way out to these skies? The Grand Cipher and I, we'd gone through thick and thin together. It's a long story, but it all started on that fateful day I met the captain. I haven't looked back since. Right then, landing maintenance. Fuel stores, full. Engine, all clear. We were ready to disembark into the unknown. What awaited us in the Zega Grande Skydom? As uneasy as I was, I couldn't help but feel a teensy bit giddy with excitement. I love that. I love his description for the ship and the captain and just kind of his excitement about seeing the open skies and everything. It's it's really cool. I'm I'm excited to hear more about this. Fantasy versus reality. Wow, this shot looks incredible. Ah, the Grand Cipher. Ever since I found her abandoned behind a cliff, it was love at first sight. I was just a kid, but I had lofty dreams of repairing that ramshackle airship and taking her to the skies. Back then, I didn't know the difference between a porthole and port side, but I was determined. I dove into books bigger than my head, and I learned basic airship repair, helmsmanship, the whole kit and caboodle. After a ton of elbow grease, the day had come. The Grand Cipher was finally ready for a test flight. I still remember how my hands trembled as I grabbed the rudder. And wouldn't you know it, she actually lifted off the ground for me. Nothing quite like watching your first love take to the skies, is there? But before I could take it all in, my dreams came crashing down. I mean literally, the Grand Cipher sunk like a damn meteor. A hundred different things could have caused it, but that didn't matter. Years of work went kaput in the blink of an eye. Betrayed by the very skies I longed for, I was crushed. Looking back now, it sounds stupid, I know, but it really felt like I had nothing to live for. I put all my hopes into that hunk of scrap. Laugh if you want, but some pits are too deep to crawl out of, especially when you look up for freedom and all you see is the expansive crystal blue of your tormentor. Don't worry, my pity party wouldn't last for too much longer. You see, my dreams had crashed like a meteor. But ironically enough, it was the meteoric rise of the Earth Day Empire that would bring the captain into my life. Salvation was on the horizon. Wow, so cool. So as a kid, he was super passionate about flying and he, I mean, he did everything he could to get it working. You know, it's funny, the fantasy versus reality episode reminds me of myself, the excitement and passion I have for wanting to record, editing, uploading, making thumbnails, doing all that stuff. You put so much time, energy, money, and effort into these videos and you do everything you can and you try your best. And then even when you do everything, it ruins an episode like the one you guys don't get to see now. Um, so really fascinating that, you know, Rackham has the same kind of experience. He's like, look, I put my heart and soul into this and I got it off the ground for a second and it crashed. And it's just like, wow, I kind of know the feeling in my own way. All right, let's keep going. Back at the wheel. Just as I'd given up on flying, the Earth Day Empire had arrived in Port Breeze and they were hellbent on exploiting our local protector the primal beast of wind, Tiamat. Their twisted machinations caused her to go on a rampage. Port Breeze was in peril. Fortunately, we had an ace up our sleeve, Lyria. Thing is, Lyria needed to get close to Tiamat, which meant we had to go up, and to go up, we needed to fly. Thought I'd already closed that chapter of my life when the skies betrayed me, but Lives were on the line. Quick, get on the Grand Cipher! I don't know what got into me. She'd fell once before. Hell, I knew she might fall again. 
Nothing like a healthy fear of death to keep you grounded, eh? But the people of Port Breeze, and my new crewmates, had entrusted their fates to my piloting skills. My own fear was insignificant. All I needed to do was trust myself, too. It's a damn shame it took me this long. But I'm back now, and ready to face the skies if you'll have me. As the Grand Cipher's engine purred to life, I knew I would no longer be encumbered by fear. I gripped the mast with pride as I set our course directly above to the rampaging Tiamat. Lyria quelled the primal beast, and catastrophe had been averted. Not to mention, I could finally dream again. Ever since that day, I've been the helmsman for the Grand Cipher and its crew. And it's been one hell of a ride. I've since formed a pact with good old Tiamat and made amends with the shipwright primal who built the Grand Cipher, Noah. So, Zega Grande Skyda might be uncharted territory, but my role remains the same, to see our crew arrive safely, no matter the destination. And that includes Estelucia. Some folks might call reaching the end of the skies an impossible dream, but I ain't too worried. With the Grand Cipher as our wings, anything's possible. Man, I love his story. I think it's so cool. The the passion and the excitement for the Grand Cipher and getting off the ground. It, uh, it's awesome. I love this. Them's the brakes, kid. Call it a side effect of being a helmsman, but my ears tend to laser in on any talk of airships. Then again, damn near anybody could have heard this guy shouting. No! No! You can't do this! She's still skyworthy! She can still fly! The distraught man was making a scene outside. Three seemingly unfazed onlookers surrounded him. Between all the belly aching, I pieced together the man's story. He was an engineer, was upset that an airship called the Nautilus was set to be decommissioned. His three friends, meanwhile, were telling him to see reason that an old ship like that would be more useful as scrap. Reminded me of the Port Breeze days, back when my own dreams seemed like unscalable walls. The three onlookers were a young helmsman, a young mechanic, and an older merchant. They presented a unified front against the engineer, countering each of his arguments threefold whenever he opened his mouth to protest. As much as I wanted to help the guy, the trio were speaking the truth. Repairing the damn thing would cost buckets of rupees, and you can't fix an airship on gumption alone. Trust me, I've tried. Them's the brakes, kid. I turned to leave. None of my business, right? But dumb old me, I had to pause as my ears caught what he said next. We made a pact, didn't we? Don't you remember? The Nautilus. You promised that we would take her to the skies. He could barely hold it together. You could hear it in his voice. The desperation as he clung to a quickly fading dream. It was a feeling all too familiar to me. Wow. And the next one is actually where we get to use Rackham. I'm really excited for this. I've done this already, but I'm really happy to do it again. I'm excited. This is super cool. So we finally get to use Rackham in story. I do want to play as all these characters at some point anyway. Down, but not out. I mean, sure, the Nautilus may be old, but she's got plenty of potential. She could easily outpace any other cargo ship in the fleet, at least three times faster. Found the poor bastard blathering his woes at a tavern in Folka. The seat next to his happened to be conveniently open, so I took it. Without so much as asking my name, he launched into story after story. It was clear he still needed to vent. Apparently, he just recently started his career as an engineer, planned on restoring the Nautilus. It would revitalize the local economy, help Folka this, assist Tim Peel that. He went on and on. But I knew he wasn't going to feel better until he confronted the actual issue at hand. Don't get me wrong, I think it's great you want to help your home like this, but that's not the real reason you're upset, is it? That obvious, huh? I, uh, made a promise to my friends. One day we'd fly our beloved Nautilus across the skies together. 
but the ship in question was long past its heyday and had deteriorated beyond the point of conventional repair. Time is a cruel but patient mistress, and among the original Nautilites, only Kent had yet to accept reality. After he finished his explanation, silence fell between us. Well, until another man frantically stumbled into the tavern. I'd seen him somewhere before. Oh yeah, one of the naysayers from earlier, the merchant. Somebody help! Anybody! Monsters are ransacking my precious cargo! I was torn. Do my civil duty as a skyfarer and save the cargo, or help this ass determined to crush the dreams of my newfound friend? So, I asked Kent. What? Uh, of course you should help him! Not a moment's hesitation from the kid. I liked that. This would have been the perfect moment to ensure the continued survival of the Nautilus, at least in the short term. But despite that, Kent didn't think twice about helping his fellow man. Hell yeah, Kent. I'll see what I can do. That's so cool. What a really good story there. And oh, now, boy. look at look because. at Rackham's gun. It's so cool. It's so dope, dude. According so to the merchant, our destination should be around oh, here. Man, I just hope there's anything left to save. Let's get moving. Look at this. We get to use Spitfire bullet hail. We get to use his new gun, which, by the way, if I well, I'll check it out later. It's fine. I was gonna, I was gonna go look at the gun again, but it's fine. Goblins. So, what the hell are they doing here? Uh, wait, hold on. There might be something up here. I don't remember. Did I search over here last time? That was an item. Ooh, wool shroom. I might have already got whatever was there originally, but that's all right. Again, it's uh, it's just me showing you the missions and stuff. All right, so let's go this way. Now, where did those enemies go? They're up here. Okay. Don't say we didn't warn you. Oh, this is fun. All right, ready? Holy hail. Oh, no. Fire! Not bad, <laughs> if I say so myself. <laughs> That's now so then, cool. We're, we're. That is so awesome. I freaking love using the gun. It's so it's so nice to have a long range weapon because I'm used to Grand just using his like his Kamehameha attack from his sword, but that's it. For the most part, it's just using that the close range the of, of weapons. For. All right, let's go help out with the cargo. I don't think there's anything around here. I don't see anything on the map. Safe and sound. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Maybe. Oh, looks no. like it's been rummaged through. Watch out, Rackham! We've got goblins and wyverns on our trail. Wait, hold on. Let me It'll see if I can. More than that to us. Oh no! Wait. Victory lies ahead. Wait, hold on. Where's the? Looking good. Bring it. Things are about to get dicey. Just don't let him get close to the cargo. It's go time, baby. Catch this. Dude, I'm just shooting with my... Dude, it's non-stop fire. Stay sharp, everybody. Enchanted land. Been saving this one. Pull it here. Yep, there we go. Nice. It's over. All right, ready? Hot enough for you. Oh, dang it. I thought I got to use it. Um... Very cool. Yeah, so when I did this originally, it did talk about... Um, oh, Daisy. It did talk about how to use the gun. So that's the only thing you guys are missing out of this. It just says how to use the gun. So you just shoot it like this. Don't let up! I believe I can do a charged attack. Trigger finger is itching! Nice, there we go. So the big shot finally decided to show Ready, up. Ready, charge. Huh? Well, you're charge. going down like the rest of them. <laughs> oh, let's go. Rain hell on them. Superb. Fire in the hole. Nice. Don't let up. This, you're mine. Ah, Got him. Let's go. Dude, using Rackham's gun is really cool. He has a charge you attack. You monsters screwed up big time today. Because <sighs> so you cool. chose to mess with the best crew to ever cross these skies. Quest cleared. Let's go. Not too bad. Not too bad. That's dope. I love that. Oh, it's so cool.
Oh, oh you're a lifesaver. How could I ever thank you? You want to thank someone? Thank him. I gestured toward Kent, the man's face filled with shame as the irony dawned on him. So it was you, huh? Hey, uh, hey, listen. I'm sorry about earlier. I could have heard you out. After the merchant left, I wanted to focus on the next goal at hand. Putting some wind back in the Nautilus's sails. So I proceeded to do some intelligent and, dare I say, brilliant thinking on the topic when Kent asked what I was talking about. Whoops. Must have been thinking out loud again. You just wait and see. Awesome. I love these quests. I love the extra stuff you can do in the game. All right. So I believe now... Come to view the requests. If I go here, so you guys have seen everything I've seen. So all the stuff we do now is going to be new. I'm probably not going to do all of them. I think I'll just do a couple for each of these. I don't know that I even have the time to do all of them. So if we don't complete them all this episode, the next episode, we'll finish the ones we can do. And then we'll push on to the new city that I will show you guys. We've done nothing in that new city. As soon as we got there in the recording, you don't get to see. I immediately turned back and came back to the city. So all of that will be new for me as well. EO's decision. If I hadn't met Master Zaka on that fateful day, if he hadn't saved me, there's no way I'd be where I am now. I'm from the Vault's Duchy, where the weather's sweltering all year long, thanks to a river of lava that flows through the island. My hometown might not have been the most scenic place, but as long as I had Master Zaka with me, I was happy. After traveling for so long, I could finally say that with pride. Before I left on my journey, I was completely clueless. When my master went missing, I just ran around like a chicken with its head cut off. I was looking for something, anything, that would help me find him. And that's when I met the crew. The reason behind his disappearance turned out to be even worse than I could have imagined. The Earth State Empire had driven him out of his mind. They had manipulated him into awakening the primal beast that had lain dormant beneath the ground, Colossus. Fortunately, I was able to break through to him, thwarting the Empire's attempt to exploit Colossus's powers for conquest. I learned that they were doing all sorts of horrible things, even to their own people, in order to achieve their goals. My master was a kind person who never hesitated to help those in need. I resented the Empire for making him suffer. And I couldn't just sit around when there was work to be done. That's why I decided to join the crew. To stick it to those Empire jerks and give their victims something to smile about. That's awesome. I was wondering about EO's. Oh, here we go. Uh, Fate episode reward. So this is what you would have seen for the other episodes if you guys got them and I hadn't screwed up the audio stuff for that episode. So we went from uh, HP 1282 to 1292. So a 10 point increase and then a, only a three point attack increase, but still helpful. All right, next up. Uh, but yeah, I love learning about EO's story and the fact that we got to learn more about her is cool because I feel like she's kind of been in the background a little bit on our team. We don't really know a ton about her. Some of the others, we've gotten a little bit of information, but really cool to hear more about her story and this master she had. Favorite teacher. A few years before I met the crew, I lost my parents to an epidemic. I mourned their deaths for who knows how long. I could barely even bring myself to face reality each morning. With no living relatives in vaults, I was like a ship adrift at sea. I had nowhere to go and nowhere to belong. Until one day, my master reached out his hand to me. I was so depressed I just kept staring at the ground. But that gentle smile never left his face as he asked me, Why do you look so sad? There was something in his voice that made me look up. When I did, a beautiful bouquet of flowers appeared in his hand, seemingly out of thin air. I had no idea how he'd done it, but I knew it must have been some kind of parlor trick. But he insisted it was magic. What a goofball, right? Saying that when he can use real magic. 
it was just the magic I needed at that moment. Beautiful and kind. He went on to show me all kinds of incredible spells, the likes of which I'd never seen before. Watching him made me smile at a time when I thought I'd forgotten how. My master would always say that magic exists to make people happy. Something about that spoke to me. It made me want to become a mage just like him. So I signed myself up as his disciple, begging him to teach me magic. I'll never forget how happy I was when he told me I had talent. After all, if he was right, that meant I had the potential to make people smile too. Wow, what a beautiful story. A, a beautifully sad story. Starting off with losing both her parents in an epidemic. I mean, wow. Uh, really sad, but we got some upgrades here for EO. Um, wow, that was that was hard to listen to. Man, not gonna lie. That was tough. I'm so sorry, EO. Smile Conjurer. One day, shortly after I joined the crew, I suddenly lost the ability to use magic. What? No matter how many times I tried casting a spell, nothing happened. I had no clue what to do. The rest of the crew thought Master Zaka might have the answers I needed, so we set sail for vaults. It'd been forever since I'd been back home. My master was thrilled to see how much I'd grown. I opened my mouth to ask him about my problem, but when I saw how happy he looked, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I promised him that I'd come back as a great mage, but there I was, unable to cast even a single spell. The last thing I wanted was for him to be disappointed in me. Around that time, an epidemic returned to vaults, the same disease that had claimed the lives of my parents. Wanting to keep it from spreading any further, my master headed to the clinic to speak with the people who'd been infected. But he ended up getting sick too. The source of the epidemic turned out to be an evil spirit that revealed itself to us right there in the clinic. I immediately confronted it. That rotten creature had already taken my parents from me. I wasn't gonna let it take anyone else. Determined to make it pay, I raised my staff, but nothing happened. I'll never forget how it felt to watch, helplessly, as my parents' killer got away. The crew gave chase, but I continued to stand where I was. Without my magic, I didn't see the point. I just ended up getting in the way. All I could do was watch as my master suffered, withering away. Nothing had changed since the last time. But you know, it wasn't all bad. In search of a solution to my magic loss at the local library, I happened to come across a beautiful golden staff, one left to me by my mother. That's when Master Zaka revealed that my mother had been a mage too. On the verge of tears, I clenched my staff tightly in frustration. My beloved home and master were being threatened by a disease-spreading spirit, and there was nothing I could do to stop it. Just as I began feeling completely hopeless, the staff began to glow. Somehow I could feel it encouraging me, empowering me. So what if I couldn't use magic? Surely there were other ways to help everyone. Unable to stand around doing nothing any longer, I ran off to find the crew. When I finally tracked them down, they'd already been rendered powerless by the disease. That left me as the only person who could fight. There wasn't a second to lose. It was that moment when I decided I was done running away. I promised myself a long time ago that I was going to use my magic to make people happy. Filled with newfound resolve, I heard a voice coming from the staff. Mom? Is that you? The voice told me to visualize the power flowing through me. As I did, I could feel magic welling up inside me flooding out from deep within. With my mom's help, I was able to defeat the evil spirit. As soon as it was gone, light erupted from my staff. I turned to see the rest of the crew climbing to their feet, their symptoms gone. The power spread through the entire island of Vault's Duchy, 
Eliminating the disease and bringing smiles back to the people. Things were a little touch and go there for a while, but in the end, everyone pulled through. And I've been able to use my magic without any issue ever since. I just know it's because my mom is watching over me through my staff. Thanks to her, I can keep traveling with the crew, using the staff she left me to bring out more smiles along the way. Wow. Um, EO's story is incredibly touching and really sad at the same time. Um, I wish I had more time to continue this because I would love to keep going. We can't actually do any more of EOs. These are not met yet. We have to progress through the main story to do this one. Then we can do episode four. So we've got Ugin and Rosetta left. I believe we can probably only do three or four of their episodes. And that'll take us about 15, 20 minutes to do those potentially. I guess it depends. Um, I would do more, but this ep uh, episode two for EO took about 10 minutes of dialogue. So I don't have any more time to do more. So I apologize, guys. But listen, we are really far along with the fate episodes. We've done, what is that, 10? 13, 16 episodes in today's right, video. Um, so I'm going to stop you right here, guys. In the next episode, we will continue. We'll finish these episodes and we'll go to that new city of, again, I think it's like Seed Hollow or something. Um, I'm really excited. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will catch you guys in the next episode. But until next time, I'm out. Peace.